Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing the power of confessional prayer. Friends, confessing our faults, confessing our fears, confessing our frustrations to our Heavenly Father is vitally important to maintain spiritual robust and accountability to our Heavenly Father. And you must never forget, we have an eternal foe, and that is the flesh. If you're not careful, you can slip and slide and break your spiritual momentum if you do not identify with the enemy within. And that is our flesh man, our fallen nature, the unregenerated man uh, uh, or inner man, that part of you and I that the scriptures tell us most notably in Romans chapter 8 is constantly fighting with God. But I want to encourage you today that the scriptures, friends, matter of fact, one of the most powerful scriptures that tells us how to deal with anxiety is found in Philippians. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Friends, when I really got an understanding of this scripture, it carried me through a very difficult season of my own personal life. And I'm telling you, when you meditate on what the writer was, was giving us, it's, it's powerful. It tells us this, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and petition or supplication with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Friends, follow me closely today because the number one thing you must know and never forget, our enemy is within, it's the flesh. And if you do not know and understand that your number one battle daily is with the self, but once you learn the power of confessional prayer, friends, don't hide anything from the Father. Talk to him, uncover it all, tell him everything, because friends, he already knows. And when you keep trying to deal with God and you got that mask on, come on, you got to take that mask off. You got to get rid of it. Take the mask off, my friends. Do not allow your flesh to beat you, to bully you, to bash you from within your own inner thoughts, friends. You got to take them captive and go to God in prayer with everything, everything that's bothering you, your flaws, your everything. You got to bring it to him because why? It's like taking a shower. Most people who have running water, who practice good hygiene, we shower every day. And this is what confessional prayer is, friends. You are showering. You are getting all the muck. You're getting all the dirt you can't see. you just going before God. You're checking your conscience. If your conscience bothers you, friends, you cannot maintain momentum in this world journey and this faith walk, your conscience, it, 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 it is brought before the father through confession. God, I'm sneaky. God, I still, I'm still lusting. God, talk to him. You got to snatch the covers off friends. If you are a person that's constantly dealing with, with fear and anxiety gripping you, friends, you, you got to consider, are you keeping it real with God. And the other part to confessional prayer and telling him everything, because this, the writers, uh, Philippians, Paul, he said, he said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, everything by prayer, give your request to God. If you are concerned about a situation and many of us, we, we carry concerns it's human to do that. But where we got to fight is not trying to control the outcome of these situations that we want what we want. Sometimes, friends, God is not saying no. He's saying, wait a minute. 
You ain't ready for that, Sharon. You think you are. No, just wait. It's not time yet. It's not the season yet. And that's the other part of prayer is when we're talking to our father, we're giving him these petitions. We have to be willing to wait on him. And this is where many people become fearful and fretful and full of anxiety. And anxiety, friends, let me tell you how, how, how it could destroy you. Because in the etymology, when you study the word anxious, it's an old, old word. It means to be divided. When you are divided within your own soul, you are discombobulated. You are in you you're in a very fragile uh, place spiritually because now you're divided. And this is where many people will begin to grapple and and reach and do things that you should not ought not do because you are anxious. You want it right now. You got to have it the way you want it. And this is friends where many people go back into their old habitation. They go backwards into sin. They go back to those old relationships. They go back to their street manipulative ways. They go back to for some men and women. They go back to their ex-lovers. They go back to their uh, uh, blue, black book uh, phone uh, numbers lost in that phone. You go backwards because you're divided now because you will not harness that soul and tell it to be quiet. God is able. God is faithful. Father, this concerns me, but I'll wait on you. I know that you're going to come through. And I pray, Father, even though it may not be how I want it to be, help me, strengthen me, give me grace to endure. See, see, God, friends, when he sometimes is silent, it's not that he's not going to answer or give you what you're asking for. You just might have to wait. And most times we do. In the meantime, I would ask the question, what have you done for God lately? What are you doing to advance the kingdom of God? to help your fellow man, to bring hope, to preach repentance. Where are you in the harvest, my friends? Because oftentimes while we're waiting, God is waiting too. What you going to do? What you've been doing with this great gospel? While you're trying to get all these things done and answered for you, what have you done to glorify God? Enough said. Till next time, my friends. In all things, be not anxious for anything. Wait on him. And try your heart. Where are you in the harvest? God bless you, my friend. Till next time.